Hello, everybody. Good morning. And for some of us, good afternoon. Hope everyone is doing well. And welcome to the second days of the API days in Hong Kong. Uh, my name is Simon Wong. I'm coming from Musoft Boss Company. And today I'm going to share with you some of the uh, exciting uh, new development in uh, Musoft platform to support multiple APIs across any environment, uh, not only Musoft environment, but all, any environments that you build uh, API with. And I'm going to um, uh, share with you a story. Uh, before that, I want to make sure that uh, there is a forward-looking statement uh, in this presentation that may carry some of the things that is in the future. So uh, be careful as you are making decision out of this information. So uh, without further delay, I want to start with a, um, a story. So to explain how API is being evolved and how API lifecycle is being managed, uh, we'll take a look at a uh, Fictional, fictional company, Northern Child Alfita. So this is a retailer uh, which sell outdoor goods online. One of the new features that uh, NTO want to introduce to the customer is to support one click checkout button, which allow registered user to buy something with one click, just like you may have seen on many popular retail websites. So let's see how the customer experience that NTO provides through the lens of a customer. So latterly, uh, while she is shopping, she finds something that she's like, and she uses one click, one click checkout button. And just like that, she has placed her order. Because building a connected experience is not so easy, let us take a step back and see what this means to NTO IT, the IT team of NTO. Once a customer or latterly use a one-click checkout feature, on the back end, IT has to do a few things. So IT has to integrate with order management system to process the order. Um, they need to integrate CRM and support system to get the customer contact and profile information. Integrating with the SAP for inventory and availability information and integrate even for with the third party uh, vendors, uh, such as Alipay for payment processing or um, SF Express for uh, getting the ETA information for the customer for product delivery. All these systems use different mechanisms to connect and have different, uh, and they have different formats and they have different protocols they need to support. This can be a nightmare for IT team due to the complexity of the integration involved. And if this is not enough, there's a pressure from the business as they have stiff competition from their competitor. So this pressure from competitor offering similar experience can mean that there's a harsh deadline for the IT team. And there's also a data privacy uh, concern where involved payments and customer information. So security is also a consideration that the IT team need to take into. And thirdly, because of the fact that this is an order API, once built, this feature needs to guarantee uptime and high availability, as downtime can mean loss of revenue. And last but not least, they need to think about the border technical strategy and make sure that they are Agile enough to change as needed. As new requirements arise, they will be able to embrace those requirements. So this is a pain we are consistently seeing across organization in different verticals, whether this is a bank, a retailer, uh, whether this is a telco or others. This is where AnyPoint platform comes into play. The platform provides you with a few really important benefits. Um, so accelerate delivery, the platform allowed developers to build fast APIs and deliver new features faster. Um, security is built into the platform in every aspect of the capability provided. And to guarantee uptime for applications that are resilient to failures and scale with the business. 
and future proof foundation so that they can adapt to the latest and greatest innovation and technology easily. So now let's see the platform benefits and how it comes to life through uh, this particular project and through a series of demos that I'm going to um, uh, lead you to. So let's meet the team first, the team involved in building the one-click checkout experience in, in NTO. So let's see how each of them leveraged the Anypon platform to build this experience. We start with the API developers. The API developers work with the central IT teams, and their job is to design and build both APIs and the respective integrations. Let's look at the first use case they will be building. So I'm going to transition to the Anypon platform um, to play a role of uh, API developer. So in the Anypon platform, this is the Anypon platform uh, management console. And in here, we have a design center. So in the design center, essentially, this is used for designing APIs. So we have uh, all the APIs that we want to design. So I have pre prepared the API specification that I created for this particular uh, order APIs. So if you look at this API, this is built out of a Remo specification as well as um, a Swagger document. Uh, either of them will be able to support. And if you look at this uh, Swagger document, uh, you will see that it defines the types of the particular objects that needs to be operated. And it also defines the endpoints of the APIs, such as orders by IDs and orders to get the list of orders. So on the right-hand side, you will see that there is a documentation where you, you have uh, presented with uh, get and get post methods of a respective endpoints. And in this console, you will be able to look at the details of a particular uh, operation and the data type that is required. So one of the good things about the platform is to create a mocking service. So mocking service is a service that uh, it will be generated for you to basically allow you to uh, publish the API without implementing it so that the, the um, front end application developer will be able to look at the specification to know how to do their own uh, development without waiting for the implementation of the API to, be, to, 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 to come into the picture. So in here, I would just do a send. So it will actually invoke the uh, 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 mocking service to provide the actual uh, payload of the return of this API specification. So once you have this API specification written down, the next step is that you're going to publish this API to Exchange. So Exchange is a, uh, a digital catalog where you will store all the API specification, API implementation, uh, connectors, all the digital assets that you would want uh, to share with other team members, okay? So I already published this API to Exchange, so I'm not going to republish it. Instead, I will go directly to Exchange to show you what's the outcome of that publish. So this is the Exchange of um, Anypon platform. So in here, I have a order APIs that I publish. Okay, so this is a 103 version of these APIs and I can add different documentation to this API so that developers coming into this exchange will be able to discover uh, the, the, the details of these APIs. Now, in this exchange, you can also test out the APIs. Okay, just as the same as the design center. But in fact, this exchange, once you put the API into the exchange, other developers will be able to look at it and try to use it. Suppose I become a mobile app developer. I want to develop this one click button on my mobile app. I will be able to come here to look at this order API. We'll be able to test this API with the mocking service and get the payload 
so that I can use this particular format and the particular, particular way to call this API to incorporate into my mobile application so that I will not need to wait for the implementation of the API before I can proceed with my mobile application development. So this is the beauty of this uh, parallel development. Okay, so now this is the API that I have published and it's made available to the border team. Now I need to implement this APIs. So uh, we'll use Anypon Studio. Anypon Studio is a um, API development tool, a drag and drop tool, allow you to really easily construct the logic of a particular API and the integration flow. So remember, I already created an API specification uh, in the Anypoint platform. So an easy, an easy way to actually uh, create a new project is to uh, read the API specification that I just created and generate a scaffolding so that I can implement the logic of the APIs. So I will name this an order API as a project name. And then I am going to look up the specification. I want to generate this API scaffolding. So I type order. You can see that there's, there will be a lot of uh, specification that has the name order, but I'm looking at particularly this order. Okay, and I move it to the select modules. So once I move it in, I will click finish. Once I click finish, Anypon Studio will generate the scaffolding for me. So you can see that the status of generating the scaffolding, a new project has been generated. Okay, so we'll wait a little bit uh, while we are waiting for the scaffolding to generate to be generated. Okay, so you can see the status changes here, running the scaffolding. So in a, in a, a few seconds, uh, the scaffolding will be generated, right? And once the scaffolding is generated, you can see there's a template for you to implement your logic. For example, here, there's a get order by ID, right? What you can do is to say, for example, if the order information is in the database, in here, you can search a database connector. I want to do a query to my database to look up for the order information. So I just drag and drop the select uh, operation of a database connector. And I need to fill in the connector information, which is the database connect string as well as some SQL statement. Uh, for the matter of, um, I have already uh, created an object with some implementation. So I'm going to show you this because of time. So in here, you will see that I have a project called order processing API, which is generated from the same uh, uh, API specification. So in here, a simple logic to get an order from uh, a database. So in here, you can see that I have a database connector and I have configured the database connections. So if I click on here, I will know that. So this is my database information. I can even test the connection of the database, right? So once I test the connection of the database, I'll implement the logic and I'll build the object, uh, build the project into an API. So going back to my flow, so basically I am going to select the, the, the table, a particular table, order table from the database. And I'm going to make a decision if the order exists with the ID specified, I'll be uh, constructing a message and return to the caller. Otherwise I'll return a null, a null uh, uh, output. Okay, so in case we have find the order, um, so any point platform or any point studio will be able to provide you a uh, transform message, which provide a mapper for you to map different fields 
Uh, so if I want to expand this transform message, you will see that there's a mapping between the database view that Endpoint Studio retrieve at the targeted JSON object. So we are going to do a drag and drop of mapping different fields to different JSON object output to come up with the output of JSON. So this is essentially how we develop a uh, API in uh, Anypond platform with Anypond Studio. Uh, you can see that the, uh, the, the development process is quite simple and it doesn't really involve a lot of uh, heavy lifting coding. Now, once the um, implementation has been done, you can just do a click here to run or debug the project as well as to deploy the project to Cloud Hub. Cloud Hub is the Anyone platform um, kind of area to host your API runtime. So this is the life of a API developer. So let us go back to our presentation, trying to look at the second, uh, the second person in the, in the team, which is the API owner. So API owner, um, he or she is responsible for governing APIs with policy and to secure the endpoint which is uh, just developed and to manage who can access what APIs. So with that, I go back to our management console. Okay, I go to simply API manager. So I'm working on the same API, order API. So here, there's a list of API that is managed by Endpoint. So there's an API called order API. I click on it. I can see that this API has been running, okay? Has been deployed, uh, has been developed and deployed and running in the sand sandbox environment. And what the API owner would want to do is to provide some policy that to govern the access of these APIs. So we click on the policy button or policy menu on the left-hand side, and you indeed immediately um, are given a screen where you can apply new policy. For example, here, I want to apply a policy which allow, uh, uh, allow customer who has their own client ID and client secrets to be able to access the APIs. So here I just specify client ID enforcement. So, and then I configure. Okay, and then apply. Uh, you will notice that when the policy is applied, the uh, API uh, gateway immediately will load the policy into memory and execute and force it. So if I go back to Exchange and trying to test that API, the order APIs, then we find out that if I don't have a wallet or I don't have a wallet uh, client ID and client secret, uh, they are going to complain. Okay, in wallet client ID client secret. Okay, so the way to gain access is to do a request access to specify which API you want to request access and it will generate the client ID and client secret for you. So for the sake of, um, so I have already registered application with client ID and client secret. I'm using that client ID and client secret to show you that this is indeed the policy and force. So if I put down the right client ID and client secret, you can see that the access is allowed. Okay, so this is how it protects API from an API uh, owner perspective. There are things that the API owner wants to do in extra, which is to limit the access of the API in terms of the transaction volumes. So um, the API owner wants to protect the API from being uh, bombarded with unnecessary traffic. So um, they, he, he or she wants to really try to get 
the policy into place so that it will limit the access of a particular API uh, with a, a transaction volume li a rate limiting. So we apply a new policy, which is rate limiting. So in here, there are so many policies that you can apply out of the box and you can also develop your custom uh, policy here. So I apply the rate limit policy. Okay, and you can see that the policy also has their own version. So I say I would allow three transactions per one minute. And then I'll apply, I apply this policy. Okay, once I click apply, you can see that there are two policies that apply and enforce in these APIs. The first one is to check the client ID. The second one to really uh, ensure that the way limited uh, the lay, way limiting has been enforced. So if I go back to the same uh, API from Exchange, and I try to do the same thing um, more than three times, you see that the uh, uh, way limiting will be enforced. So I use the same client ID. And the, client, uh, and the same client secret. And then I do send. Oh, I need to select the right instance of the APIs. And I select send. Okay, send second time. And send the third time. And send the fourth time. You can see that quota has been exceeded. So you can see the API owner will be able to use different policy to ensure that to, to be to, to ensure that the API has been governed uh, with access control from a security standpoint as well as from a transaction volume standpoint. Now the third um, members of the team is DevOps engineering or DevOps engineer. Okay. So let me go to DevOps engineer. The DevOps team at NTO needs to make sure that the API is up and running at all time. If there are any issues, they are the first line of defense as downtime can mean overwhelming support calls as well as loss, in loss of revenue, right? And to see how the DevOps team use the platform, I'll bring you to another screen, which is very a DevOps engineering perspective. Okay, so I want to bring you to a particular uh, uh, component called Runtime Manager. When the manager is essentially trying to manage and see how API is being deployed. Um, so in order for DevOps manager, manager to understand, the DevOps engineer to understand how this uh, API is going to uh, handle large loading, uh, there are parameters that the DevOps engineer can configure. Uh, for example, the number of uh, worker nodes that needs to run the API or the number of uh, or the location of the runtime that needs to be deployed. So in here, uh, there's a dashboard uh, coming up which show you the basic information of the particular API running condition. Right In the settings, uh, you can easily see that there are configuration parameters that you can do to make sure that your API, so currently the API is allocated 0.1 vCore on 500 megabyte to run the APIs, and there's one copy of that API running. Now, if I want to uh, increase vertically, I can specify a different core, and I can specify a different workers. I say I run three copies of these APIs. Um, so in this way, you can scale horizontally and scale vertically, and the DevOps engineer will be able to do that through a command line as well. Okay, so this is the deployment aspect of it. And the second uh, very important aspect of the, um, the DevOps engineering to, to ensure that the health of the API running on the system. So we have been developing our uh, order API um, and the V1 proxy version. So I will try to go into the monitoring screen to take a look at the performance.
guy, how does it fare? Okay, so um, you can see that there are request volume, fair request, every uh, response time, as well as some of the very in interesting uh, 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 basic metrics that shown here, which is uh, regarding to who is accessing this API, uh, how many uh, client has been connecting to the, this API over the period of uh, time. So you can see that this is uh, kind of the aggregated number of average size of response, average size of request. So the DevOps engineers have a very good idea of how this is uh, this look like, right? So the the other aspect of this is that this is a single API uh, uh, performance uh, metrics. What about if the DevOps engineers needs to monitor multiple APIs? Okay, there are multiple ways of doing this. The first one is functional monitoring. Functional monitoring is basically uh, do a ping request to the different endpoints that you listed here and give you a report out of a continuous uh, uh, ping of the APIs. For example, all the status. If I click on it, uh, I have started this uh, monitoring for three days already, right? So, and they have a different uh, uh, rate of success and failures. So in this way, and you can set up some alert so that when there's a threshold passed, you'll get alert. So this is how a DevOps engineer can make use of this functional monitoring to make sure that the, the API available is healthy. And last but, last but not least is the visualizer. Visualizer is a way that we can have a holistic picture of how APIs are related, related to each other. So in this case, I have uh, all the APIs that I provide and it has a different policy. Say for example, I have already put three policy here, client ID, rate limiting and J JSON threat protection. So this is a policy view that allow you to see what are the policy that is applied for each APIs. Okay, and you can switch to an architecture view to see how this API related to each other. So this is all about, uh, this is all I want to say about the DevOps engineering and how MuleSoft and the platform will be able to facilitate um, their, their task. This is all good. Now, what does this leave us? Uh, if you look at, look back to our one-click project, uh, we notice that the project require multiple APIs that we need to connect. Um, all the management API, SAP, connecting to SAP, connecting to uh, third party providers such as uh, logistic and payment vendors. So um, in this diagram, we actually uh, very obviously pass the custom code stage, right? This is a non-starter. And we, we moved into the world of REST API, which is the current situation, which is a great start. But as we saw, we can only reuse one API at a time. And this translates to multiple requests and custom object to extract the data we need for our one kick project. So our aspirational goal, that is to reuse multiple APIs at once, get data across multiple APIs at one time with just one request and with no additional custom work to get what we need. And that's where the new feature Anypoint Data Graph changed the game. Let's take a look at how Anypoint Data Graph uh, works, and then uh, we'll come with a uh, demo showing you how you construct this data graph. So when we look at different APIs, we easily see that API are not API are not item it relates to other APIs, right? APIs we build often have relationship with one another. Um, this, what, does it, what does this mean, right? In this example, an order API can be related to customer API through a customer ID. An, an invoice API can be related to a product API for a product ID. So this is very interesting because through this relationship, we can conceptually stitch them together. This form a graph of all the capability within, this, within these APIs. So this graph can unlock new possibilities and we can use graph 
more efficiently to reuse the APIs that have already been exist, that have already exist. So how do we do that with data graph? So the graph serve data with a single query. Okay, the graph has all the data across your APIs. Um, so now developer don't need to spend all the time doing shared, really shallow data extraction work through different APIs. They can just query the data they need from a graph, from the graph and get the desired result. So this concept cascade for each and every connected experience that NTO will experience or it, they need to build. Secondly, the graph uh, is provided as a service. So it's an endpoint. It is a single endpoint that can be used again and again and to make each project go faster and faster. So this is the latest way MuleSoft will accelerate delivery in a, in a big step. Developers have more power to leverage from what exists in the graph without understanding all the complexity and the relationship that go behind it. So architect and IT administrator have fewer APIs to manage and to secure. So we are excited to bring this power to our customer with the power of AnyPoint Data Graph. So with AnyPoint Data Graph, MuleSoft customer can serve data across multiple API instantly, whether these APIs are from the Mule platform or from other platform. Uh, to achieve this, enterprise architects compose a data service by unifying data across API into one endpoint without doing any coding. Developers can act on this data service by getting the data they need with a single GraphQL uh, query. So AnyPond Data Graph helps developers go faster while reducing the burden of IT and operational team. Developers no longer need to build low value APIs that just join or filter data from other existing APIs. They can focus on the actual application logic. IT and operation teams have less API to manage and less API to, to monitor and govern. The single endpoint create with any point data graph once as a SaaS application with no maintenance or patching required. So with that, I want to show you how data graph works in AnyPoint platform. So I go back to the AnyPoint platform, go back to our home menu. You can immediately see that there is a data graph uh, area. So I click on data graph. So I have built a unified schema out of three APIs in this data graph. So first of all, I want to show you what are the APIs that I use to build this uh, unified schema. Remember, the graph consists of a list of APIs. And in this example, I use three APIs here to combine them and provide a unified endpoint for uh, application developer to consume. So uh, we have an order API, we have a sales API, and we have a shipment API. Now, order API and sales API are actually returning orders, but with different attributes. Uh, of an order objects. So we make use of the data graph to combine and merge these two APIs and make use of the link capability of data graph to link the shipment API or the data type into the respective orders. So the outcome of the schema will be shown in the unified schema. So this is a, uh, you can consider it as a GraphQL schema So, um, and it will show you the, all the data types and the methods that you can use uh, to, to run this, uh, to, to actually retrieve data from this unified schema. So first of all, it show you all the queries that is available after we combine the three APIs. So there's a query on order by an ID, orders and shipment ID by ID, right? So uh, for each of those uh, methods, uh, there are different data types that will be uh, will be uh, available for you to use to retrieve the data. For example, here, there are a delivery. Delivery has a shipment attrib a few, uh, attribute, and this attribute actually is pointing to the shipment data type. 
right? And the shipment data type is part of the uh, uh, shipment APIs. So for example, in the order API, we are doing a merge of these two APIs and come up with the common schema here. So as a result, uh, you will see that the combined schema, unified schema, will have all the attributes that an order will, will want to, uh, will, will, will carry and all the um, attributes that a shipment will carry. Okay, so to actually show you how it will look like, I'm going to run a GraphQL, uh, GraphQL query in this uh, particular uh, window. So uh, let me start by a very um, primitive version, okay? So for example, I just want to delete this. I want to do a order by ID or order. I just want to create or just get all the orders, right? And then in the orders, we I want to get the um, order ID as a field, as well as status as a field. As you uh, notice that when I type in uh, the gra GraphQL uh, window, uh, actually auto compete the my my query with the available field. Uh, available fields for that particular context in that particular context. So I just want to see this and then I try to run this query. So you can see that there are two orders, okay, uh, and their status as well as their order ID. Okay, now I want to uh, produce more fields. I want to require the product maybe. Okay, I want to see the product of this uh, order. Okay, so order product is a compact type. So uh, in order, uh, in the product compact type, complex type, I want to see the name of the product, and I want to see um, what else I have, um, the unit unit price of the product, for example, like this. Okay, then I just run the query. Then I see that there are different payload return. So you can see that the developer. Uh, who consume this uh, particular GraphQL API will be able to uh, specify their attribute uh, in a way that uh, they don't care about the uh, what is behind running, right? So what is behind running is actually show in the trace query button. So if I run this query again, and you will be given, so these are the query that runs uh, to combine and aggregate the result for you, okay? Um, so I have created a full query of this particular uh, order, and I'm trying to show you uh, how does it look like when I enter the, um, the, the full query of all the attributes of a particular orders. So I run this query, oops. I think so. You can see that um, the return return payload is the full records of a particular order, including their uh, dependent objects like shipment, delivery, address, things like that. And if you actually look at the query you can see that it actually reach out to different APIs to retrieve information and aggregate for you. So this is very good, right? And from a standpoint of a mobile application or, or the e-commerce uh, developer, they want to consume this API. They simply can just copy the endpoint here and the client ID and client secrets and then the query, right? Um, so I have created a Postman which uh, actually run this query from the Postman. So in here, I have this endpoint, which is the GraphQL uh, SaaS endpoint, and the respective client ID and client secrets. And then I will have uh, the body, which is consists of the GraphQL that I just use, All right? So I can just run this API against the API, the GraphQL API endpoint. And this is the result, right? Which is essentially the same as the result that I got from the uh, console here, the data graph console. 
So you can see the power of data graph uh, in just a short uh, demo. And I'm sure that you will have a lot of chance to learn this during uh, this conference, as well as some of the tutorial and resources that I'm going to show you later. So if I get back to our presentation, uh, I think the important thing is The important things is that uh, when we talk about the benefits of MuleSoft AnyPoint platform, is actually um, uh, these four uh, benefits has been, um, you know, supported by, you know, a very differentiating architecture principle. Okay, for example, if you are we are talking about accelerated delivery, actually the platform provides a full API uh, management lifecycle from design development testing, deploy, uh, publishing, uh, 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 and deployment, as well as to uh, manage it, right? Um, this really shortened the time for you to um, uh, roll out APIs for the purpose of um, the, the project, like this uh, one-click uh, checkout project. And at the same time, we continue to add capabilities such as data graph that I show you today to further uh, accelerate the delivery of APIs by offering a GraphQL-based uh, query that a uh, developer can use. Um, for the automated security, uh, if you notice that APIs in MuleSoft environment is using a uh, micro gateway strategy, uh, it actually allow you to enforce security policy um, to protect the last mile of uh, protecting an API, right? Um, so this uh, comprehensive policy together with this uh, embedded gateway will provide really a uh, comprehensive security and uh, governance for your APIs. Um, we see an operation is really supported by the fact that we are using a microservice-based architecture on our platform, that uh, leveraging this microservice architecture to provide elasticity, reliability, and scalability. And lastly, the platform is built for future-proof foundation. It is a composable platform that allow you to compose different capability into an API-led approach uh, 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 in mind. So this is a uh, future-proof in the sense that you can plug and play uh, new capabilities, new innovation, even a new core backend that you need to connect with, and the new digital channels, whether this is a chatbot or a bot or um, social networking, right? So there is a lot uh, you can uh, build on top of this platform with the composability uh, that is um, that is designed from ground up. So I want to just mention a few resources uh, to sign up for a free trial from AnyPoint platform, AnyPoint, um, so uh, AnyPoint.com, uh, let me see. Yeah, from anypon uh, musoft.com. And this free trial actually include the data graph as part of the free trial. So you can try out the new feature data graph. And also there are a whole bunch of tutorials on our website that you can use uh, to do a step-by-step -step tutorial to learn um, new things about the platform. And of course, if you are uh, interested to know more and to learn more, uh, I will uh, encourage you to head to the MuleSoft virtual booth located in the Partners Village. So with that, I want to give, uh, you know, I want to thank you all the people who will stay with us. And if you have any question, I'll take a look from the chat and try to answer your questions. Let me see. Um, anyone has any question on the chat? Let me see how, how I do in the chat.
So I haven't seen any question from the Q&A uh, session, uh, Q&A um, area of the meeting. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to um, ask there. Okay, if there's no question, um, I would um, end this session and thank you so much uh, for staying with us uh, this morning or this afternoon. And I hope that you will have a really wonderful day with uh, the other session within the API Days conference. Thank you.